Welcome back to Jamie and Andy's Tesla Adventures. The other day we received FSD update 14.2.1. We haven't had a chance to test it out until today. We had FSD activated heading toward Clark, Colorado. FSD was not slowing down, especially around curves. Uh, just like our complaints have been, we've been saying that FSD is probably going to be unusable during the winter season because of the snowy and icy roads. From what we've experienced just in this short, tiny little drive, seems like that may be the case. People have been saying on X, FSD 14.2 and also 14.2.1 have been pretty chill in the snow, slowing down, even uh, depending, you know, it didn't matter what uh, speed profile they were in. So we'll go ahead and go from here. Uh, we have a destination set in already. We're getting this uh, camera visibility limited. Looks like that was the front camera actually, so. FSD should have taken care of that. Because it's supposed to do it on its own. Let's see here. It looks fine to me. Um, okay, so we have it in sloth mode. And FSD probably should have waited. There is a car coming. Uh, you know, it should have just waited. It had no reason to go, especially when there was a car coming. And. Um, See, like, even right now, going about 30 right here is pretty uneasy. Yeah, if it were like a truck, I would I would probably be fine with 30. But... Even then, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess... Ice, is, ice, ice on bridges can be a problem. So... Um, and right here you got a little message that says, Poor weather detected. So it knows that there's poor weather, but... Like the speed, like this, I would not be going 33. No. On these curves, this is a two lane road. Um, there's very little shoulder. It should be going a lot slower. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that it's at least not trying to go 45. So it does seem to be reducing it's speed, but it's still a little bit too quick in my opinion. Because yeah. if we do hit black ice or just some packed snow that reduces traction very suddenly, we'll definitely lose control. So, yep. um, now there will be disagreement. I mean, some people like this is fine right here. This is a wide enough turn. I think 35 or so is fine. But back there, that turn was way too tight for how quickly it was it was taking it. Exactly. And here again, we're okay. Um, here, we're probably okay. Plus, there's no oncoming traffic. Um, and that is a factor, too. Like, when you're on a two-lane road and you're hitting a tighter curve, like, and there's on, on like this oncoming one traffic, out. like, mm -hmm. it's extremely dangerous when you're making a left because you could slide right into oncoming traffic. Like, see, right now it should be slowing down. It should absolutely be slowing it's down. It's going 38. Okay, good. All right, so that handled right. It did okay. I will give it. Now, it does look like it is different. Like, when we've driven this road in good conditions, it doesn't behave like this. Mm -hmm. It definitely goes faster. It so does. There's no question it's doing something, but, and maybe it's just us that we're too sensitive, but I would like it to be um, this a is, little... Yeah, I was going to start to cut you off, but this is sloth mode. So, you know, you, it, it, I would want it to go a little bit slower, especially in the, in the slicker weather. Because um, right back there around that tight curve that we just went around, uh, the, when we were actually driving that way, it certainly did slide just a little bit um, but it, again it was not going a speed that would be ideal yeah and now of course we're fine it's a straightaway I still would probably prefer um, a little bit lower speed than the speed limit uh, even though it is straight you never know there could be debris there could be an animal uh, it would probably be better to go maybe 35 30-35, yeah. What, what yeah. happens in this curve up here? Not much. That is that is way too fast in my opinion. Yeah, same here. 43 in a curve, and I can feel the lateral 
Yep. G forces, they're not bad, but it's enough. Okay, and up here, like I, I won't lie, like I'm very uneasy. Yeah. We'll go ahead and disengage it. Yeah, so they're slippery. There, it is very slick. I just slid a little bit. So there's work to be done here. I mean, obviously we're FSD was going a little too fast. Doesn't need to go to the speed limit in these conditions. It needs to go slower than that, especially going around curves. We may be a little more sensitive. I have myself flipped a car, lost control, and uh, flown off the road and, and flipped upside down before. And it's not pleasant. And so I, I am maybe a little more sensitive than some drivers. But I can assure you, like, until you're actually in a car that's barreling out of control and you you know your your life flashes before your eyes you don't really understand like how bad it gets and how quickly it gets bad and um you know i i would like to see a little more caution here because i've driven these roads many times so is jamie and you can have very unexpectedly slick spots that hit very uh, very suddenly and you can't even necessarily see them before they happen so exactly and this, the temperature is 28 degrees out um, which means you know that's that's formula right there for ice to start forming well or at the very least just a layer of slick packed snow yeah and you know that can get you too it doesn't even have to be ice it can just be snow that's been packed down. If there's not quite enough traffic to keep the snow kind of melted, as we have in, in this lane that we're in now, we can see it's a little less traveled than the other one. Um, you know, you can run into trouble and it hits you like a ton of bricks very suddenly and the car starts fishtailing back and forth. And before you know it, you're in the ditch <clears throat> or worse. Yeah, exactly. And so, I would say it's it is clear that FSD is reacting to the weather. It's definitely driving differently, and that's good. But you know, going 35 to 40 miles per hour around a curve like this, when you have degraded traction, is is just not good. Yeah, I agree. I'll agree with Andy on that. It did seem like it was you know doing better. Obviously, keeping down below the speed limit. Um, I'll reactivate it right now. Um, but again, like he said, it's those patches that you get. And we've seen those patches too. And we've seen people, you know, lose control, especially when they're going around curves uh, on a 65 mile per hour highway. Uh, at Rabbit Ears Pass, there was just snow and ice. It's obvious. It, it just goes slow. But people have this need, I you know, don't know why, this need to go maybe five under the speed, let's say in that case, 65, so they were going probably you know, uh, 60. Like, do they really need to be going that speed? He lost control and he actually did hit a wall of, uh, you know, a bankment of snow. Okay, this is yeah. so uncomfortable to me. Like, this, this road is not bad. Like, most of this snow is fairly melted, I'll bring that. But again, it's but that. It's downhill and it's a fairly tight curve and there's no guardrail. FSC was going a little too fast around that curve uh, going downhill in the snow. It's, it's just like, would we have probably been fine? Yes. But all it takes is one time out of a thousand and you're in that ditch and possibly injured and, and the car is effed up too. And so, you know, I know there will be some that watch this video. I don't know how many will watch it, but <laughs> depending on how many we get. Uh, you know, there will be some that say, oh, you're being too touchy and, and sensitive, and maybe. But having been through this, and I've lost traction many times in my life, it's not worth saving 30 seconds at your destination to go 5 to 10 miles per hour faster. It just isn't worth it. Well, even that, like, imagine if it was an elderly person. They don't want to go this speed. Or, right. you know, it, it's a sloth mode. I'm not saying sloth. I like how sloth mode actually does just go the exact speed limit. Uh, but in the snowy conditions, yeah, you know, with ice, uh, doesn't need to do that. Even rain, like, uh, with rain, 
you know, the, the fear of hydroplaning, I mean, what is it, about 50, a little bit above 55? Yeah. I, That's a dangerous zone right there. <clears throat> yep, it depends on the tire pressure. But um, I was always taught it's nine times the square root of the tire pressure to get it in knots. Because when I was in flying school, that was always the rule of thumb. Um, which I think when we did that computation, it's right around 50 miles per hour for this car. Yes. Um, so as long as you stay below that, hydroplaning theoretically shouldn't be a problem. But, um, yeah, it's... I'd say there's been progress. It looks like FSD is definitely seeing the weather. It's reacting to it, but I still think it's a little bit too aggressive. Um, I can't clear this with the speed. Yeah, I think it does it on its own. Well, yeah, but it's not even doing it. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe uh, giving us that manual option would be good because FSD is not doing its job. Because, uh, you know, it's obviously not, you can't really see anything. There's no visibility right yeah. there. That's just the front camera. The back camera looks like it's decent enough. Um, but yeah, I uh, just wanted to make this video short to kind of show and prove that FSD, yes, it does a little bit better, but with those tight curves, especially in these types of conditions on the road, it needs to slow it down even more. And even straightaways, like it doesn't need to go that speed limit. Like there's no, no reason for it to go that speed limit. It just, you could easily have a deer exactly or other creature jump onto the road kind of unexpectedly and then you're in trouble so um yeah so right. yeah um anyway i uh, just wanted to bring that you know point up and uh we'll see we'll continue to try and use fsd uh again like i've said in posts on x i don't think we're going to be using fsd as much especially on the uh, pass or highway parts um, for reasons like this. Uh, Tesla needs to make it, you know, very comfortable for people if they, you know, if they want to use it year round. Not everywhere is California. Not everywhere is Arizona. Not everywhere is Florida. We have places like this and FSD, it being the AI that it is, needs to adjust and it needs to adapt to its environment no matter where it is. And this being the case of uh, the mountains and the temperature and the snow and the conditions that we get up here, um, you know, it needs to adjust to that to make the ride comfortable enough to where people will be like, you know what, I trust this system so much that it's going around that curve gently, it's going slow enough, it's not gonna cause a problem. Uh, so hopefully Tesla, you know, does fix that and maybe somebody from Tesla will watch this video. I doubt it, but it just needs to be brought to their attention uh, that FSD still needs to slow it down a bit. Yeah, I'm wondering if they could add like a snow mode or something. Um, just that that really like, because they, they know the radius of the curves from the mapping data. You know, they know probably some to some degree, you know, the probabilistically speaking, what the coefficient, uh, coefficient of friction is and stuff like that, you know, and so they, they should be able to kind of know what the safe kind of worst case scenario turning speeds are, you know, as you hit these curves. So I don't know, it would be nice to have a very conservative snow mode, you know, if, if you are faced with weather like this, like right now, this isn't too bad. No, this is comfortable. This is, this is, you know, there's enough traffic here, the snow's kind of being kept, kept within check, it's not, you know, accumulating all that much, but on that road behind us, I would not say that was the case, like even though, yes, it was a relatively thin layer of snow, but it was enough. Well, it was slick enough to where I actually did slide yes. uh, a couple of times. But one in that area around that curve when we first went around it before we started the video. And then the other one, too, when I disengaged FSD because it was coming up to that curve and going way too fast yeah. for it to make that curve. Like, I, I, f I feel like that would be a nice addition for, you know, winter driving. Maybe it could be seasonal. The snow mode wouldn't be available until, you know, like September, October or something, but so it wouldn't be, you know, clutter in the UI, but just something that would be a very conservative setting so that FSD behaved, you know, 
probably some would find it annoyingly conservative, but at least you're not in the ditch. Exactly. All right, um, so we're going to go ahead and end the video. Uh, we do appreciate the time, and thank you for watching. And uh, everybody be safe Yes. while driving, and also, you know, while you're using FSD, too. Try, you know, don't be, don't be prideful in it. You know, it's still a system, and it needs to be worked out. Well, One day, hopefully, it'll get there. Yeah, here's hoping. When you're driving, those are very, well, that's tough. I, yeah. I understand that. It's not easy to train an AI to, to drive well in the winter, but... Yet, hopefully. <laughs> although, that was a great example. Like, it was really gentle with how it yeah. stopped. And that's exactly what you want. I just wish that it would apply that same kind of care to the curves on those two-lane roads we were on back there. Yeah, like, slow down way in advance. Yes, gently slow down. You know, if it's a fairly tight curve, maybe only take it at 20 to 25. Um, you know, this should be doable, I would think. So, because that was just 40. That was 40 miles per. Again, there are highways that have just as tight curves over there on the on uh, US 40, mm -hmm. like going up the pass and all that. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and until next time. Thanks.